tell you what, let's do some Anon questions. Why not? We'll do some now and we'll do them later. And hopefully these ones will wake up my brain. There's no browser version of this. So this is all, this all has to be done on an app on your phone. I have so many questions. There we go. Those are the opened ones. So let's go through some anonymously asked questions uh, from the NGL. I know that uh, some people, uh, and by some people I mean women in the Doctor Who like fandom, have been uh, getting terrible experiences with this. Shocker. But here we go. So these are anonymously asked questions that I have not watched. You saw on the screen that they were unopened ones. Favourite collection set in terms of artwork and new features? It's got to be season 22. I've done the unboxing um, video. I just haven't edited it and put it together fully yet. But it, it, yeah, the the special features are superb. The in conversations with Colin Baker, Michael Grade and Nicola Bryant are, are terrific. Uh, yeah, they're terrific. The time lash VFX are fun, even though I'm not really one for watching the enhanced effects versions. But the, the artwork on the front of Colin and all, everything in, in the booklet as well, Everything from just, you know, all of the other collection sets, you turn them around and on the back is the TARDIS, is the police box. But for that one, it's the uh, it's the column, it's the fireplace that uh, the Chameleon Circuit TARDIS from Attack of the Cybermen turns into. Terrific detail, and I love it so much. The season 22, that, that is my favourite one. So thank you to whoever sent that anonymous question. Uh, next one. Favourite musical, movie and or theatrical? I have a soft spot for Guys and Dolls. I did see it live in the West End like 15 years ago now with Ewan McGregor as Sky Masterson. That was a really fun experience. I'm hopelessly out of touch with modern day musicals. I'm, I'm far removed from that scene now. I've heard that Six is good. I've seen Hamilton from uh, I've Hamilton on Disney Plus uh, and other modern ones yeah I, I do have a soft spot for jesus christ superstar and like andrew lloyd Webber, he can get in the bin but uh, jesus christ superstar is oddly enough a much more interesting and nuanced portrayal of jesus as a character than 99 percent of other media revolving around the crucifixion of jesus jesus christ superstar is a genuinely good and interesting musical and i played pilot in the musical years ago who is this broken man and i gave him the 39 lashes that was fun a lot of blood on stage um peter ferguson cats <laughs> i've never really resonated with cats i'm so sorry go come and go watch it in the heights uh i'll check that out at some point there's also west side story which i, I think i was just too young to get it as a kid but i really want to see spielberg's version that's on disney plus i think as well i wasn't that fussed about watching it even though it's spielberg and then i saw all of the clips on uh twitter of just incredible shots and moments and i thought okay maybe i do need to see it so thank you to who uh, to whoever submitted that uh, I've also, oh, I was also in Oliver. I was Mr. Sowerberry. Who's a director you'd really like to see helm a story, be it up and coming, established, or big name? Presuming you mean Doctor Who. I'm so attached to the idea of Peter Jackson directing a story now after that tease that he did back in 2014. Let me double check when this was. This might be content ID claimed, so let's have a quick look. But yeah, there was that tease when Peter Jackson did a video on his youtube channel several years ago where him and his daughter polishing their oscar statues and all of a sudden peter capaldi walks in and he's like oh <laughs> yeah let's, let's play this this is really funny yes, i'm the doctor who correct he said you have to <laughs> i love that line so yeah this is um apparently in response to stephen moffat sending peter jackson letters asking him to direct Doctor Who stuff and there's a Dalek prop as well which is not something they brought over to New Zealand Peter Jackson just owns Dalek props is it the TV on do we oh, yeah. so yeah I, Peter Capaldi did a convention in New Zealand back in 2014 2015 or something and they filmed this fun tease when was this six years so this would have been in what 25th 2016 2017 math is hard but either way that was apparently on the cards and it just never wound up happening which is disappointing he said he'd do it for free if he could just get a dalek prop i remember thinking at the, i even think i made a video about this at the time he was like yeah i'll do i'll do it for free if i get a dalek prop and then all of a sudden this video drops and what's in his house but a bronze dalek prop 
and fans at the time had no idea that he owned a bronze Dalek prop. We just we just thought he had some classic series gunmetal grey or silver ones from Death to the Daleks. So we thought, oh, this deal has been made now. But apparently that just didn't happen, which is unfortunate. I love what Peter Jackson's been doing recently, though, with um, film restoration and history with uh, They Shall Not Grow Old and uh, The Beatles Get Back. Those are terrific, but I kind of do want to see him behind the camera properly directing again. Uh, even though films like King Kong and the last Hobbit film, not, not terrific work, I do love the passion he brings to uh, the whatever he's working on. And his camera work and his sensibilities are almost second to none. I I absolutely love it. The evil Dalek Peter Jackson, I think, owns a full-on genuine 60s Dalek prop with the lower half of the Dalek, especially made for Evil of the Daleks. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there... Um, They even put it in the animated version. The Dalek with the truncated bottom so that it would fit through the doorways or something. And in the animated version, that Dalek is actually in the animated version even though it's animated they they didn't need to bring a dalek on or off set so they didn't need to throw that's just really fun detail but yeah so we because we didn't know that he owned a bronze prop and then this appeared we thought that maybe the deal had been made but apparently not and edgar wright i know edgar wright has been mentioned in the chat as well but yeah peter jackson is a name i just would love to see that's a big name get absolutely would love that uh, so thank you to whomever sent that. Do you think Doctor Who should continue as fully serialized or continue with standalone stories? That's a really good question. And I was thinking about this the other day and I don't know the answer because Flux is, it works until it didn't. Basically up until part five, Survivors of the Flux, I thought that it was really working as a one long serialized story. And then once it became apparent that they were just abandon, uh, like abandoning character just for the sake of get to the end of the story and throw in all these elements, it, it just wasn't working by the end of it. But that's more indicative of Chibnall's approach to Flux or whatever happened creatively in those last two episodes as opposed to an issue with just the serialized format itself. Now, the... Um, the uh, studio jargon, the production jargon of we're doing serialized storytelling because that's where TV is going is not an incorrect one. Some of the most popular TV being made now, things like Line of Duty, things like The Man in, in the Canoe, um, and uh, that, what was it? It was the, um, that's um, sta um, Stadium Tragedy in Liverpool. God, my brain, I'm so sorry. Hillsborough, that was a really good, drama in january uh and there was um four lives like th this is some of the most popular tv being made right now even things like obi-wan and stranger things on streaming services really popular and really big serialized long-form shows so that it makes doctor who doing story 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 with the occasional two or three parter and thank you uh, that's what the drama was called but it was about hillsborough uh it was about one of the mo the mothers of one of the victims of hillsborough uh paul mcgann was in it so yeah, that's completely true, but I do think that there there is still a place for these standalone stories. It depends on what direction Russ T. Davis would want to take it. Of course, he can do long-form stories like It's a Sin, like Years and Years, but he can also do serialized, um, not serialized, he can also do standalone stories week to week like he did in series one to four and the 2009 specials with these breadcrumb themes making their way through. It's, yeah... Uh, also, Gigman, Nippy, Hillsborough, and Sheffield. Oh, sorry, yeah, par uh, apologies. The, no, yeah, so I got mixed up because wasn't it in Liverpool where there was a similar, or maybe it was even the same disaster where the, because of the Suns reporting, they boycotted it? Um, I think that was Liverpool. It might have also been Sheffield. I think that's where I got my wires crossed. Either way, thank you for the correction. I, I need it. Um, Yeah, honestly, flip a coin and... Both results are valid, I guess. Stick standalone or go serialized. Or I don't think Doctor Who is in a position to swap year on year. Or here's a year of um, uh, here's a year of serialized storytelling. Here's a year of standalone stories. I don't think attention spans and audience patience for format changes is there. Probably not. So whatever Rusty Davis wants to do, I'm sure it will work out fine. But Flux was an interesting experiment that I hope that the right lessons moving forward are learned from it. So, next question. Thank you so much to whoever sent that question. Do, do, do. 
remakes of lost Doctor Who stories for or against? We've had this conversation on stream. Um, remakes, live action ones. I'll, I'll just be really quick. I'll repeat it. It's an interesting idea. And I think maybe for full stories like Marco Polo or The Smugglers or The Massacre, maybe. But I think the logistical hurdles of getting actors to record between four and seven episodes of lost niche 1960s black and white TV, I don't think the audience is there for it. If they're able to somehow do it and like it gets confirmed a slot on BBC One or BBC Two, then... I think that's interesting, but for a collection set or a home media release, not happening, uh, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so I don't think you'll get David Bradley or the other actors from An Adventure in Space and Time or Twice Upon a Time who played Ben and Polly. I don't think they'll, you'll get them all on board for it at the same time. Uh, or whoever you could get to play uh, a new Patrick Troughton. I think the animated recreations, while currently stopping at the moment, we've got no news of Abominable Snowman. We have no idea when that's coming out. That was announced back in November, so who knows? But it's an interesting prospect and an interesting idea. And I think if anyone's going to do it, the fans should do it. Like, obviously, fans with disposable income and a lot of time to do it. I wouldn't say, like, don't go into debt remaking Marco Polo. Please don't do it. I, I implore you to not do it. But... In terms of actual proper productions to do it, unless there are able to get confirmed TV slots, no, I'm afraid not. What are the stories that your opinion has changed the most over the years? Now, this may sound big-headed of me, but I tend to not really change my opinions on media, like at least to a drastic extent. Not because I am immovable and that my opinion is incapable of being changed, but because, because of the way I look and analyse media... There's probably a really good reason why I had that particular reaction to that piece of media in the first place. Now, there's some like degrees where I'll love a story or love a film or TV show and then love it even more on a repeat viewing. But in terms of I used to hate this story or this film, now I love it, tends really not to happen. However, I will say that probably the biggest example is the God Complex. I severely underrated the God Complex. Like, the, the stuff that I liked about it at the time, I still do like now. But I think I really appreciate the vibe more. I think that there's the, 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 the cop-out of Rory apparently not believing in anything, which is why he was offered the exit. Dumb, never made sense. But I th it's also something that kind of gets hindered in hindsight because... Series 6 is not Amy and Rory's last season. God Complex should be their last proper story as companions, but it, it just isn't. But, yeah, God Complex is, like, started out as, like, a 6 out of 10 if I was doing numbers now, and now it's, like, way higher than that. But that's probably the most I've shifted on a story. But, yeah, thank you for asking that question anonymously. Uh, okay, what would your Doctor rankings look like? Blimey, right... I would have to stick to TV. It couldn't be and Big Finish as well, because I'm not enough of a Big Finish completionist. Rob uh, again, what about the Doctor Falls? No, I, I loved the Doctor Falls before, but I still think it's underrated by the fandom, and it's it's still terrific. Like, yeah, it's gone from great to even greater, as opposed to, it was pretty good, to, oh, actually, this is really good like the god complex this is just me rambling at this point but yeah still doctor four is really good but yeah when it comes to when it comes to doctor rankings i'd have to go for tv only and as a result doctors like paul mcgann and colin baker do have to be at the bottom or near the bottom i'm so sorry um a little bit higher up you'll get your hartnells and john pertwees you know doctors who i really like however uh, they don't quite vibe or gel with me as much as other incarnations do. And then you've got your middles, like your, like, Matt Smith, Capaldi, um, Tom Baker, David Tennant, and, like, in, in no particular order, I should say. And then your highers up, where, like, you've got your Eccleston, your Sylvester McCoy, your Peter Davisons. Each list is going to look so drastically different, but that's broadly what my list would look like. At some point, I do have to do a proper in-depth breakdown but to do that i need to watch way more hartnell and i need to watch way more troughton 
So, uh, and also, do I count Fugitive from War and Meta Crisis? I probably don't count Meta Crisis, but yeah, it's my best funny, but I didn't really like McCoy so much. McCoy is a doc. I adore Sylvester McCoy's performance and his Doctor, but he is only in a dozen stories, and only eight of them are like peak McCoy in terms of Cartmore Master Plan scheming manipulator. That's the seventh Doctor that I love. Tony, <laughs> Tony Fox says, would you count the Morbius Doctors? And I don't know why my mind did not go to Brain of Morbius. It went to Morbius starring Jared Leto. And I thought, you've got all these five Doctors now, or six Morbius Doctors, all of them going, it's morbing time, and the crowd goes wild. No. <laughs> Dear, where's my brain at? But yeah, I know, yeah, I, um, even Dark Troughton doesn't exist in my stars. Troughton pro would probably be on that borderline between like my top tier and my middle tier. Like he's around that space, but I do need to watch more Troughton. So yeah, I love McCoy, but when you compare like eight peak McCoy stories with like three seasons and a bunch of specials with Tenant, which is like 40, nearly 50 episodes of TV that's it's tough to compare it really is i love tom baker though but there's undeniably like a lull mainly towards the end um yeah it's a bit tough yeah uh, like when he's so in his last few seasons where his heart's not quite in it anymore do you hold that against him because that's still seven years it would like you could say the same with nine though that is true nostalgia will play a role there where i grew up with nine and went on that journey with him in 2005 whereas mccoy had three years <laughs> frazzles of you the best quote of the mccoy area era was when he said it's mccoy in time <laughs> That's what he says whenever he's going to talk somebody to death. Like, he goes to that that villain in Dragonfire, and before he convinces him that his homeworld is, like, been and gone, he just turns to the camera, and he says, I'm going to McCoy this whole man's career. And then he talks him to death. That's... <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. Ah, dear. Right. Um... Do, do, do. Oh, interesting question. Why did you say that criticizing reactionaries would be a form of ableism? Now I didn't now I may be misremembering. I didn't I don't recall saying that criticizing reactionaries as a whole would be a form of ableism, but I did say that in regards to maybe one or two people where they just do genuinely seem um mentally not all there and uh quite unhinged and also clearly victims of like big propaganda campaigns and it would, it would almost be like trying to insult somebody who's been indoctrinated into a cult so there probably is a form of ableism there so yeah that that was a junction wasn't it but these are asked anonymously and this has been open to any, for anybody to answer i'm going through all of these as well are there any villains you'd like to see Capaldi face when Big Finish inevitably gets him involved? Any Big Finish writers you'd like to see write for him? I would love Timothy X Attack to write for the 12th Doctor. Whether or not... Because it's difficult because the 12th Doctors uh, and specifically like Peter Capaldi's vernacular and way of speaking would be... It is very difficult to sort of um, appropriate and to... Uh, to replicate it's really it, that seems quite tough but um timothy x attack is someone who has written some really big out there sci-fi concepts like the planet of the end for the ninth doctor he's written he's written he's written some terrific stuff for the war doctor especially rewind from the new battlegrounds box set he is like big idea sci-fi stuff um and I would love to see the 12th Doctor in that scenario. Imagine a cross between like, Heaven Sent, but in like Douglas Adams universes. That's the vibe I get with Timothy X Attack. I've not listened comprehensively to all of his work. Um, there's some, uh, there's, there's uh, some Time War stuff of his that I've not listened to yet. But the dude gets Doctor Who. 
clearly loves sci-fi and i'm really looking forward to his next ninth doctor story he's doing uh salvation nine which is the ninth doctor and sontaran story which comes out in august which comes out next month really looking forward to that he is a writer who i would love uh him to write for for big finish uh for capaldi specifically uh, next question what would be your dream job in your tv career uh more of what i'm doing now but better paid and more regularly for financial stability uh, i'd love to do more floor managing more assistant directing eventually to either direct or become first assistant director uh, that's basically what i want to try and do uh in terms of actual shows doctor who is the big one i'd love to work on that uh behind the scenes um but yeah when it comes to writing stuff that's kind of like on the back burner right now because i've been so busy but that's the stuff i'd love to do kind of what i'm doing now but more of it and a little bit and another rung up the ladder um do you think the doc 2 fandom has grown more toxic in recent years and do you see it getting any better now with this it's a it's a big question but i think the corners of the fandom that are toxic with the exception of you know just Doki who twitter having a normal one sometimes is that a lot of that toxicity is coming from like fandom menace type circles people who are like really don't actually engage properly with like the doc 2 community broadly they're just sort of in their own little echo chambers shouting out misogyny and bigotry to an audience and because they are the ones with the big platforms like your nerd rotics like your heels versus babyface uh they sort of become uh, un uh, uh frustratingly like the faces of the fandom even though they don't really engage with it outside of their own platforms i don't see it getting better whilst that grift is still uh, while that grift is still so i guess knocking stuff off my desk i don't see fandom getting a better perception or the community improving whilst that grift is still so successful for them uh, but in terms of the actual community itself uh i think that there's been a real surge of like good like some really good vibes uh with like the people who have only just started watching with jodie whittaker and chris chibnall like you do get some cringe 100 percent, you do get some cringe and i've been blocked by a lot of these people as well who i've never interacted with just because maybe i might have been critical once or twice even though i'm you know we should kind of maybe be on the same side but in terms of like the fan art and the creativity and the enthusiasm, I think that's that's always really great to see. Flipsy Doki who Twitter casually calling human nature racist for the seventh time. Oh yeah, it has its moments, absolutely, where they do like hunker down and it's like this is we want to be really great activists, but we don't quite know what that means yet because we're still figuring it out. That's frustrating. However, I would like it's not even close i would rather have a community of like ten thousand of those people than a handful of like heels versus baby faces where it's like yeah black people are just the worst and we've got to get them off tv like for me it's not even a question i do see it getting better as hopefully conservatism is kind of on the way out and people are kind of waking up to it uh to it's just inherent failings and it's obvious vulnerabilities but th it's a slow process right uh next question what doctor who youtuber and podcasters do you recommend um so when it comes to who tubers um oh isn't it like philip hawkins's birthday today or was it yesterday either way philip hawkins uh adam martin from amtv um crispy pro who also podcasts with uh troy red archer live for the who's there a doctor who podcast there's also who knew a doctor who podcast by josh carr uh whom else is there i know that i could list off like 10 people and I, I keep keep going and i'd still end up missing a couple of people so i do apologize um base oh um doctor community show go through my previous live streams and see who i've guested with and if they have a youtube channel or a podcast subscribe to those um who else um i'm sure there's loads more i am just drawing a blank i am unfortunately um five who fans even though they're not around you should still follow them in case they come back rob again do you think that Ses um uh seska says is a good hootube i think used a clip of her once i did uh for like when she was uh distraught over matt smith regenerating um what did i play i think i played um dark invasion of earth clip i can't remember oh at a time like eight five two uh, josh snares yes josh Snares kind of retired because he's going to be show running of course so he's retired who studios as well spectral horizons i'm sure there's more 
but i apologize but yeah um seska says i don't watch her like enough i honestly i don't find much enjoyment or value personally out of reaction videos i also can't really do reaction videos myself because if the copyright hammer comes down i can't justify reaction videos of that type because they are technically breaching fair use like guidelines and copyright stuff it's, mm, um so yeah, it was like the evil Dalek is pretty good, totally. Um, yeah, Josh Snares as well. Do, they do great work. I still need to watch their out of time version. I'm so sorry. Dodgy Van Chaser. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry if I've got it wrong. I, I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I've got bad muscle memory, and I am dumb and a bad person. Clearly. Um, oh yeah, Jack Alexander battles in fandom. Awful lot of running. Of course, I've guessed it on there before, and hopefully will again uh Thares as well if you if you want so someone who gets into all the rumors and speculations and leaks and stuff if you want to like up to date doctor who news Thares is your guy um that's all i've got for now off the top of my head and of course mr tardis and you should subscribe and if you, if you subscribe during the live stream your name will appear at the top of the screen and smash that like button as well council of geeks as well definitely council of geeks um, I'm subscribed to, am I subscribed to Confused Adipose? No, I'm fi okay, I'll fix that. Confused Adipose as well. Um, uh, Flipseed Harbour Homes is pretty good. Uh, sometimes, I, I, there's a lot of the reviews that I, not, I, yeah, I don't agree with a lot of the reviews, but, you know, that's vibes, I guess. Um, but check out Harbo. I've, yeah, I've, I've had Harbo on stream before as well. Um, but I don't watch all their reviews, unfortunately um stew bag full davis of course obviously um okay there we go um if we made some mistakes we collab with stew bag full at some point oh what well, um i was oh, i wasn't there was something i was i was going to at one point but then it fell through i can't remember what it was for i apologize um Someone makes something as well strong of Harbo's reviews. Like the the production value is good, and like sometimes I agree with them, but sometimes they they read more as like um, insult dartboards than actual reviews. Like when you, I think it was it might have been as um, Eve of the Daleks one. Well, firstly, there's just some stuff in that review that's like that didn't even happen in the episode. What are you on about? But also, like I think it was, I was like three or four minutes into it, and he hadn't actually started the review yet. He just was Chibnall insults. And it's like, <laughs> dude, what? <laughs> like, this is just like an insult, like an insult soundboard. This isn't a review. What you want? Like, if you go into the, with this level of condescension, like, yeah. Uh, or Fossil Reviews, yeah, how was great. His Legend of Sea Devils review wasn't that great. Oh, yeah, it might have been Legend of the Sea Devils. E either way, even with the Daleks, there was stuff that just, just flat out didn't happen in the, in the episode itself. Or stuff that was explained, he said, was well, blah. But yeah. Go coming up. People also mentioning full fat videos. I still watch full fat videos, full fat productions. I think they follow me on Twitter. We should try and collab sometimes. Oh, here we go. Spam bot. Go. Go, mods. Go. Fly, my pretties. Fly. Um, Stuart Webster, Dr. Freedom. Dr. Freedom was like really vocal supporter of mine. I don't watch his stuff, unfortunately. Like, that's not have an issue. It just, I guess, I'm not subscribed. I guess I haven't watched his stuff. I'm sorry. It's happened. There's a lot of great creatives, basically check them out diverse if i am the only doctor who youtuber you are subscribed to thank you but don't be, be many others oh dominic uh who chaser dominic g martin of course that's one richard lloyd yes richard lloyd's doctor who adventures i was thinking about them the other day have they stopped doctor who adventures with well, their last video was two months ago they used to upload quite regularly hope they're doing okay Vortex Alliance, the Who Addicts, or oh, the Who Addicts are retired. Um, yeah, I think Who Addicts are retired. Um, but yeah, shout out to them as well. I've had them on stream before. Um, yeah, hope Doctor Who Adventures are doing okay. Are they still active on Twitter? My browser are fun. I thought they were on a bit of a hiatus recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they've not posted much on twitter the last tweet was in was over a month ago yeah someone should check on them they're all good they're, 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 those are some good eggs <laughs> do you have any opinions on the australian canine show i've only watched like two or three episodes because i needed clips for the class review it unironically 
takes place in a um it takes place in a dystopian future london that's a surveillance state um and <laughs> the australian canine tv series takes place in a futuristic authoritarian london run by a corrupt government and a police force who arrest and torture illegal quote aliens uh yeah it's it's hugely like on the nose um and it does not pull any punches nobody thinks and nobody gets hurt a message from stark reality it does yeah it is hu hugely broad when it takes its cultural and political swings but also not inaccurate um if you use a vpn you can watch it for free on like an australian streaming service uh like an like yeah so that's that's how i was able to watch um a few episodes i don't know if it's good it's not that bad <laughs> oh wrestling productions yes wrestling productions is great audio dramas our bfi correspondence yeah and also thank you video uh well put cover the clock situation brilliant and uh, kudos to you for bringing bringing it straight to them um hope you're all good uh, dalek 6388 i'm i'm so behind the terry nation army that's that what they're called but yeah they're really good would you rather fight one billion chicken-sized patings or one elephant-sized benny now normally you'd think of the chicken-sized patings but there's one billion of them and patings were like indestructible creatures weren't they like like massive explosives that they ate did not work so and there's a billion of them a billion's a lot like i, I shouldn't have to say this but a billion is a big number so it's got to be one elephant-sized Benny. And didn't Benny have like an oxygen tank and everything with him as well? Just because he's big, I reckon I could take him. Anyway, thank you to Lily for sending this meme. An unearthly theatre child. And there's me pulling my my confused face to the to the camera. God, I look. Don't you think? Don't you think he looks tired? Don't you think he looks tired? Chat. Don't you think he looks tired? Uh dear. Thank you to Lily for sending that. That's the the big finish cover for the Mr. Titus and Beep the Meep adventures. I like the logo, though. What version of the Doctor logo is that, Lily? That's cool. I like that a lot. It's your regeneration story. Oh, is that why I'm glowing? Oh, so... Okay, so Billy... Uh, Billy? So Beep the... I, com I combined Lily and Beep the Meep to Billy. Um, it says Beep the Meep, the reason for my regeneration. Is he my Wilfred Mott, who I must sacrifice myself to save? Haha. <laughs> um okay will you ever do a retrospective on your 12-ish years on youtube probably not um because there's gonna be a lot of like boring bits like oh i started my youtube channel because i wanted to defend victory of the daleks Re reviewed it for a few years took like two years off and then came back and did more of the same that honestly i don't think that's particularly interesting and I, it would end up taking time away from projects that I actually do want to work on. Um, yeah, honestly, I just don't have that much to say, unfortunately, about my time on YouTube as a... Like, there's no interesting story to tell in that retrospective. I apologize. Anyway, next question. You are allowed to remake one Doctor Who TV story, but every single cast member, apart from one, is replaced by the Muppets. Which story do you choose and which character is still played by their human actor? Now, the obvious response to this, and it's not even an original one. I've seen other people talk about this before. Uh, Midnight, but it's still the 10th Doctor and everybody else around them is a Muppet. And I think that's a really great way to go for it. But there are also other stories. Uh, I'm thinking maybe two... Th tooth and claw but it's just queen victoria who's the actual actress who's still with them uh, it's just it's the still human oh review of death is another podcast you should listen to 100 um yeah what else is there but yeah um does, does the just the chat have any suggestions worms t17 horns of nyman oh horns of nyman will be great but it's the it's the bad guy who is the is the human is the human because he's basically a, a big cartoon character anyway damien brophy i picked journey Sam, but davros is normal that's really cool finn loving monsters but who would be the muppet but who would be the human sorry jackie tyler is jackie tyler the only human bending some has deep breath but with only capaldi maybe heavens that's cheating <laughs> heaven sent but it's the veil 
Um, or Lily Hurt Source for the logo. So thank you so thank you so much. Dalek, but it's just the Dalek. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. Design for logo. Oh, thank you. That logo from Lily Who's cover came from Reddit, the Great Argorath. So there we go. Thank you so much. The Muppets of Time. Uh, Impossible Planet, but it's just David Tennant. That'd be cool. Can, those Ood puppets would be fun. Yeah, that's a good question, though. Thank you for asking. So, next question is, if you were Doctor Who showrunner, what would the tone and central themes of your era be? What types of stories are you telling? All big question for such a short span of time. Uh, so, I'd mainly... I Honestly, I'd go for something similar to what Russell T. Davis did. Honestly, I think big on emotion, char- like the companion is someone who like grows and changes over the course of the one, maybe two seasons. They're the one who undergoes the arc and the change because the doctor makes them a better or different person. I think, yeah, rather than deifying the companions or just having them be passive spectators like uh, Steve Moffat and Chris Chibnall have done. Um, but yeah, basically just what, like, listen to the collateral of Ivanhoe and that's sort of my my vibe, I guess, in terms of what my themes would be in the tone. But then again, that was also me trying to uh, do a spec script for the Chris Chibnall era. But yeah, I, th- th- that would basically be my very short checklist. So next question. One of your favorite jokes that you ever used in your reviews? I like the Cyber Steve and Cyber Jeff one. Oh, there was um, the bit in my... Uh, series 12 ranking video where I'm, I'm talking about Fugitive of the Jadoon and it's like the story doesn't even come up with a reason why the Fugitive Doctor and the Twilight Doctor don't just immediately solve the issue and then it cuts to the clip of the Fugitive Doctor saying I'd like you to get off my ship now then there's a pause and then like a crash zoom on the twelfth do- on the 13th Doctor why like it's because i think it's it's a well-timed joke but it is also just genuinely an issue with the episode and the story itself um but yeah in terms of i do like the cyber steven cyber jeff jokes one second let's try and if i can maybe try and quickly find my favorite yeah so from attack of the cybermen my cyber semba review i think this is my favorite cyber steven cyber jeff joke hello what's this is this a present for me? Oh, Cyber Steve, this has all of the makings of your lucky day. <laughs> ah, 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 why did I do that? Ah, why am I using my gun to put out the flames? <laughs> okay, I, I like that one. I like that one. But yeah, so I, I like Cyber Steve and Cyber Jeff. And the fact that Jeremy Magnus Stone knows about it as well blows my mind. Um, if anyone else has got any ideas or suggestions, then go for it. But... Any idea used in an episode of Doctor Who that you think could have been explored loads more? Oh, stuff like um, Frontier in Space, I think, about deceit and fake news from media and uh, authoritarian governments is absolutely something that should be on the docket a bit more right now. I think that would be a really good idea uh, to explore, especially in the in the setting of Doctor Who. Process of is just invoice it, man. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, the, the last few pages of Spy 4 Part 2... I've gone missing, and Chris Jimmel was too embarrassed to ask for more printer ink to print out the scripts. Just invoice it, man. I, okay, I like that one. I do like the the tone that I take in the in those ranking videos. A bit quicker and a bit more punchy. Cheaper City Blues equality revoked from Earthshock. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, once I'll try and find that one again. Only to get kidnapped and held hostage a few minutes later. Uh, that's good. Right, uh, but yeah, I, ideas um, in Doctor Who episodes. <laughs> getting rid of women's civil rights. That's going to get clipped. Uh, no, but... Yeah, I think that more political, uh, more politics, more pol- more asbestos, more asbestos. She was blue's best use of that dynasty, dynasty warriors, however. Yeah, yeah, I'm reversing it. It's just the, it's the cherry on top. Puzzle by the phone call from your Unquiet Dead review is one of. I do not remember that. Um, yeah, I've compl- I've forgotten that unfortunately. Stupid Earth brains from Russell Jackson. Honestly, that's just funny in terms of just that's just a line from the episode that I just pounce on, I guess. If the episode has to do all the heavy lifting, 
then I think it takes the joke out of my hands. I, I can't and I can't be credited with it. But yeah, unfortunately, I've got a bit of a, a, a dead end for that question, unfortunately. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, Doctor in Prison Revolution. Oh, 100%. Um, okay, uh, why did the light bulb video get so many views? I have no idea. YouTube decided to just just put that video in front of people's faces and people enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to try and do more of those in the in the future. I have no idea. I need to do that at some point. Um, oh, Robin is speaking of Back to the Future. I love the Gelt screaming joke. Oh, yeah, let's put that on. One second. Versus Jackson actually clickbait in it. I've done clickbait videos before, though, and they didn't have that big of a reaction. Doctor Who does 9-11. Mr. Enter would be proud. The comment section enjoyed that one as well, and I'm very glad that they did. Yeah, because I, I did a bit about um, the sound mixing in The Unquiet Dead, and there's the Back to the Future joke. Here we go. Yeah, sound mixing in The Unquiet Dead, and they really messed it up. Help us. I could have, in retrospect, I could have timed that one better. Yeah, I, I, I think I needed to time that one a bit quicker. But yeah, right, uh, let's go for some more Anon questions, and then we'll move on to a different topic. We'll talk beyond war games. Lady Who era, yay or nay? um yay don't know yeah I, I, let's go yay opinions on second Akinola. uh great yeah great composer i think that he's severely underrated now when you listen to tracks like uh the future is mine like uh me and my mates like rebuilt the guy he's not just ambience he's got a great sense of melody as well i think that there's some really great earworms and i really 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 like his work i think that because we've had we had Murray Gold for so long that a lot of people watching didn't quite know how to process different styles of music for a little bit, um, but I, I yeah I really can't wait to hear his Flux soundtrack. I do love his Cyberman theme, his Master and Dalek theme as well. Um, uh, Bowser Four Nine Four, the Resolution soundtrack is a banger. Absolutely is. Uh, oh, uh, but that that has reminded me. One second. This is like. My fav what like maybe my favorite joke that nobody brings up and it makes me quite sad. No one talks about this bit for my review and it makes me quite sad. That plot synopsis with the Dalek story and the Ryan's dad story, you can probably already tell what the big storytelling hurdle with this episode is. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't belong. But before I'm personally very proud of that. But you go in the comments section. No one talks about it. Sometimes this is the cross that I bear as a zealist internet YouTuber. It's okay. That joke died for your sins. Uh, anyway, right. So, uh, yeah, but Sagan Akinola is really good. If he were to stay on for the Russell T. Davis era, then I'd absolutely be fine for that. Like, I think he's really, really good. Edward, I frowned when it came up. Oh, I'm sorry that you don't like your, um, uh, like your Muppets reference, or is it Sesame Street? I can't remember. Don't you find did you, did you deliberately align your voice to the dialect lights flashing? No, I did not. No, I didn't even notice that to be honest. Um, oh yeah, there's also the bit in the same joke where I just put Bolstrek's voice over the dialect speaking, and that was very very funny. Uh, next question: This still on? Yes. That's, that's it. There we go. Send your contacts for the gag I mentioned earlier. Uh, is this on Twitter? Uh, how have you sent me this? Oh, on Discord. This is the gag I was talking about earlier. Warning for the audience. Prepare for low quality early 2000s beardless Mr. Tardis. One second. I need to watch this first. Oh, that's a good... Uh, that's a good cut. I did pretty good there. One second. So, uh... I might just play the audio until my, uh, to avoid content ID claim, until I appear on camera. So I'm just going to play the audio and then we'll, uh, uh, and then I'll play me. Another highlight is the read through of A Christmas Carol, which gets interrupted by the Gelf. Because remember, Christmas Carol was originally written as a serious horror story, and it really shows in this reading. By the way, can you imagine getting a refund for that show? Hello, hi. Um, I was at um, a read-through of um, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol last night, and 
Ghost decided to hijack the theatre. Is there any way I could possibly get a refund or speak to anyone in management? What do you mean, how am I talking to you? I'm on the phone. What do you mean phones weren't invented yet? What the Shakespeare is going on? <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, that's my um, university accommodation, which was basically just that wall and then like another wall there. Blimey. I, why am I wearing a poppy? It must have been that time of year. Well, the Shakespeare is going on. Bring the trilby back. No, it's, it's in a cupboard. Not a bad idea. I, looking back, I'm quite surprised at how well... I think what I did... Still, I still own the hat. It's in a cupboard somewhere. I think what I did was that I had the phone. I was like, well, uh, yeah, what do you mean phones weren't invented yet? And then I dropped it and then reacted. 